This video contains violent images of death. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to Psychology of the Unknown. Today we take a look at the five canonical victims of Jack the Ripper. The first of which was Mary Nichols discovered on Friday, August 31st, 1888, at 3.40 a.m. Her skirt was pulled up, throat slashed deeply twice, all the way down to her vertebrae. Her lower abdomen cut several times. Some of the wounds had cut open her body cavity, exposing her intestines. Annie Chapman, found around 6 a.m., Saturday, September 8, 1888. Her left arm was placed across her left breast. Her legs were drawn up with her feet resting on the ground and knees turned outward. Her face was swollen and turned on the right side. Her swollen tongue had protruded from between her front teeth, but not beyond her lips. Her front teeth were in perfect condition for the time. Her body terribly mutilated, deep jagged incisions through the throat which reached right around the throat. Her abdomen cut open with intestines pulled out and uterus removed and taken as a trophy. Elizabeth Stride was found around 1 a.m. on Sunday, September 30th, 1888. She was the first of the double event. She only had one deep cut on her neck through a major artery which caused spray of the blood some distance from her body, which means she was still alive when her neck was cut. What's different about Elizabeth's body is that her skirt was not raised and the body was not mutilated. The killer may have been interrupted during this murder and was unable to finish, hence the second murder within such a short period of time. Catherine Eddowes was the second of the double event. Found at 1.45 a.m. on Sunday, September 30th, 1888. She had been arrested and jailed for drunken disorderly conduct earlier in the evening, but was released at 1 a.m. the same time as Lizzie's murder. Her throat was cut twice. Her skirt lifted. Her belly cut open from her navel to her rectum with portions of her intestines removed and placed upon her shoulder. Most of her uterus was cut out. Her left kidney removed and taken as a trophy. Her face was cut up and part of one ear was removed. Mary Jane Kelly was the last of the Ripper's Whitechapel victims. Killed on November 9th, 1888 at around 4 a.m. but wasn't found until 10.45 that morning. Her body was mutilated in her own home. Pieces of her flesh were laying on her table near the window. Her body lay nude on her bed with her legs splayed open, her face mutilated beyond recognition. Parts of her nose, cheeks, eyebrows, and ears were removed. Her throat was cut to her spine, her abdomen completely eviscerated of its organs, which were presented sprawled out atop her bed. Her heart had been cut out and taken as a trophy, pieces of flesh removed from her thighs and abdomen down to the bone. Many of her clothes had been recently burned as noticed that the fireplace was still warm. Her neck had been cut multiple times, and it's believed it had taken the Ripper two hours to mutilate her body so viciously. For the most part, on each of the victim's bodies, it's believed the killer was left-handed because of the direction of each of the cuts. On the next episode of Jack the Ripper, we're going to take a look at the non-canonical victims of the Ripper. These are victims who were killed around the same time as the canonical five but can't technically be traced back to the Ripper. After that, we'll look at the letters from the Ripper, and then we'll discuss my theory of the Ripper's true identity. So make sure to tune in then.